Hello, friends. <laughs> Good to see ya. Uh, there we go. Get this adjusted here. My name's Ginger Lumen, and uh, this is your Life Practice PBL live chat that we've been doing several times this semester. I think we've just got a couple uh, chats left coming up soon. Um, gosh, I don't know where that uh, schedule is. I'll have to find that in a little bit. But wanted to share that uh, we've got those things coming up. And if you go to the facebook.com slash life practice PBL, I think that's it, then you'll get to see our schedule and you can uh, see what's going on. Those of you who came into my personal uh, live, uh, live chat test earlier today, this is where I landed, not in the yellow room. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm trying different locations when I'm doing these, and uh, I guess I'm back here. Anyway, uh, tonight is a big night. Uh, we've got a lot of questions that are coming up. Please, if you have questions uh, as, as you come into the live chat right now, make sure you post them. And if I miss them, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to, uh, but post them again. Uh, I've got some questions already in the in line because some folks asked on, on the page today. And so I want to dive into those. So let me jump in here. Aaron Maurer is my friend from... Um, uh, from Iowa, Bettendorf, Iowa, and he uh, asked a question, which I'm going to try to answer. He is, I don't think he's come in yet. Um, <laughs> hi, Janine. Oh, by the way, I'm saying hello to Erica and Scott and Jennifer and Kara and everybody like that. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if Aaron's come in yet, but I think he can watch this later. He's got some kids he's probably trying to put to bed. He asked a question, which I hope I understand. It says, how do you marry PLC and PBL? Where both sides are content. And I think he means content, not content. I'm not sure which what he means. And and I said, so I asked for a little clarification on PLC, like professional learning community, the DeFour, and he said, uh, yes, it's like the solution tree model. So I went in and looked a little bit, asked again for some more clarifying questions, but you know, he's busy with kids today, so he didn't he don't think he got back to me, but it seemed to me, to answer this, the question, and I think that this is not a very narrow question, I think this is a question a lot of us have. How do we marry project-based learning, I'm interpreting this way, project-based learning with the uh, things we are required to do, the mandates that our school or our district or our state says, you must do these things, like, uh, I don't know, um, Right now, a lot of folks are having to do learning objectives on their board. And if you know what learning objectives are, they say, this is what we're learning today. And if you understand PBL, this is what we're learning today is basically like I just handed you a birthday present and said, hi, happy birthday. I got you it and tell you exactly what it is before you even had a chance to uh, unwrap it. And, and that stinks. So um, I think what he means to say, hi, Andrea, glad to have you in. Um, so good, that's Jennifer's question too, I'm glad, I'm glad. What, what we want to do with those situations is uh, talk, first of all, to our, our, our leaders, our admin or whomever is saying that we must do this and explain to them what PBL is, why it works, what's interesting about it, and that the whole point of these, these regimented pieces that either the solution tree gives us or that the learning objectives give us, the whole point of it is that kids know what it is they're learning or that good quality learning is happening. And so if we can, we can convince the leaders that the driving question allows for that to happen. So if I have the driving question written on the board, and a kid, somebody walks in and asks, hey, kids, what are we learning? Well, first of all, the kids shouldn't even have to look at the board. They should say, hey, you know, well, we're trying to figure out how to save the world because blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, they should be able to tell you this if it's a tasty project that they're really invested in. If they're not invested in it and they can't tell you, next time, um, figure out how to get a better one for them. But most of the time, the kids know right away. That's the point. And so most administrators will say, and everyone I've ever talked to, because I have plenty who sit in on my trainings, and I say, okay, let's see if we're going to wrestle here, or, or you know, one of us is going to get kicked out. And, and I ask them, and every single time, every single time they've said, no, that fits. That's perfect. As long as the kids know what they're learning and why they're learning it that day. And I said, cool, because it might last a week. <laughs> 
And uh, I encourage you to have those conversations with your own um, administrators or the folks who are saying these are the hoops you have to jump. Some may not take that conversation. They may say, nope, everybody has to do the same thing. Then you know you have more work to do because project-based learning isn't that. That, uh, that they've got to understand and, and, and you've got to step back and take smaller steps toward them as to why we want to do different things for different kids. And, and, uh, and that's, that's, that's a lot of what I do is convince folks of why we want to do that. So I don't know if this totally answers Aaron's question. Jennifer, did this help you at all? Um, I, I, I don't know your new curriculum directors. I'd say new, but they've been there three or four years. But I, I, I know a lot of your administrators, Jen, and I, I think they, I think they get behind this. Um, I hope. If not, hit me up again and let's see what we can get worked out individual uh, with you and me on that. Another, another question um, that was messaged to me was, what makes a good topic or a good challenge or a good question for PBO? And I, I guess to me, there's a lot of folks, again, I talk about the gurus of PBL who come up with uh, a lot of uh, rules and rigid, rigid uh, pieces that have to be in PBL, and I'm more flexible than that, except that if you want to make sure it's a good question or a topic, one, think of who your kids are. Think of what they're interested in. Think about what they care about. Think about things they should care about. Think about things that your community needs your kids to care about. Pull that in as a topic or pull in some of those pieces into the topics you have to be addressing. Um, that's how you start making good good project questions and challenges. Um, it helps. It, and at first, you may have to make those. You may have to make up the questions and the challenges uh, because your kids don't know how to do that. And, and, and if you can tie it to the real world, then your kids will start to see Oh, that's why we're learning this. Oh, that's why it's applicable to the real world. Okay, and and then it's easier for them to start looking around their own lives and say, well, maybe this would be good to study in the classroom, and they can start coming up with thoughts and ideas. Also, a good topic challenge question. It's it's just got to be interesting for the kids, and um, and and maybe the topic isn't interesting, but. Um, how, what, what other hurdles can you bring in? What other pieces can you bring in that makes it interesting? Again, I go back to my thought. If I'm working with students on um, cells, I might start out by talking about zombies. <laughs> you know, they think they're they think they're learning about zombies and how zombieism is passed from one person to another. Um, I know that we're learning about cells and how viruses and or bacteria attack cells. We both get what we want in that case. Andrea just posted a question. She says, principal wants the teachers to create an exemplar. Principal wants the teachers to create an exemplar of what a project should look like. Uh, how can I help him see that is too constrained? Well, if your teachers have never done anything amazing before, or if they're just brand new to it, well, he, he can't, I'm just going to say he or she, it's it's a it's a long stretch to expect teachers who are brand new to this to create an exemplar. Um, you've got to have some time and practice because and, I, and I'm talking about PBL here. I, I won't talk about just doing projects because I think I'm I'm out of my area of expertise there, and I'm certainly out of my area of interest. We talk about PBL here, uh, so it takes years. I'm not gonna lie, it takes years to really get to know how this functions best for our community's kids. Um, I've been doing project-based learning for 10 years and I still uh, am scrambling when I'm walking into a new community, a new set of uh, kids, a new set of teachers, a new set of expectations. And while there are some definite commonalities, a lot of commonalities, I've got to quick learn the kids and, and the situation. Um, so it's asking us to rethink how we've been taught how to learn. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask any teacher to do that. I'd ask for examples from people who have been doing it and then work to adjust that for my own kiddos. Uh, Erica said, looking for good resources for great ideas to use that cover certain concepts. In other words, standards. Um, good resources. Erica, I think I know that you teach um, upper, 
um, intermediate. You're like fifth, sixth grade, right? I think, is that right? Sorry, I don't remember everybody perfectly. Erica, darn it. Um, again, the Buck Institute, BIE.org is a great place to go. Another great place to go. Oh, I don't have any cards with me right here. But if you were to, oh, this is backwards, um, look up Life Practice PBL or Life Practice Learning, lifepracticepbl.org. Uh, we have on there 64 different projects that hit a lot of different topics. Um, the Intel website, if you were to Google Intel PBL units or the unit plan index, Intel, I-N-T-E-L, unit plan index, They've got a lot of examples in there, K through 12, and they're very cleanly written out, and they are PBL. Um, otherwise, just get into the hashtag PBL on Twitter and, and talk to people. Um, get involved on my uh, personal page, Ginger Lumen, on Facebook. Ask the questions out loud. I collect really smart people who can help answer a lot of really tough questions, so let's use this as a true community. Um, if you ask more uh, specific, I can probably point you into certain areas or certain people. Andrea, if a kid want to keep changing their mind on their project, um, that happens. That absolutely happens. Um, that's where we start working with deadlines, hard deadlines and soft deadlines. Um, we want to make sure that they have a sense of urgency. Um, and when I say soft deadline and hard deadline, I don't mean a soft deadline like... Um, Oh, you know, um, you should have some pieces of it done by here and we're flexible. That's not what I mean. I mean, a soft deadline is you're going to present this as if it was real, as if this was the, the actual, the real people coming in. Um, and then we pause uh, and, and talk about what we liked about what we saw in the presentation, what we wondered. Uh, and so then the people who were presenting have good marching orders about what needs to be fixed before the actual hard deadline with the real audience coming in. Um, I've got a whole lot more. I've, I've talked about this in, in previous um, videos. I encourage you to go back and look at those on our page. You can look under the videos and you can see them all in there. Um, if you are impatient for that, it's written out here in a huge chapter um, uh, um, about uh, how to make sure that kids have their feet held to the fire. Also, I don't want to just have kids learn whatever you want to because I don't know what they want to learn. So at first I have to give them a little more structure and quickly, as quick as I can, pull that support away from project to project to where they finally can make decisions uh, and know how to stick with them. Uh, projects that start out when you're first with them start short and that way if they want to change their mind, they don't really have time because the deadline's already here and slowly start extending it. That really helps too. I know you guys are further ahead with me than on the questions than I really am, but I'm just going to scroll. Um, Janine and Andrea, go ahead, talk to each other. Cool. Um, I love that. Erica's in seventh grade, math and pre-algebra. Um, I think a lot of math is, um, you'll find it in your, in your science department. And there's also a whole lot of math. I have a colleague who jokes about this. I don't know how much I totally believe it, but I certainly laugh too and think, eh. um, the only profession, and this is what he says, the only profession in the whole wide world that needs to know every piece of Algebra 1 is an Algebra 1 teacher. <laughs> now, I can say that and laugh, but um, uh, administrators don't think that's funny because we still have, you know, tests and things that we're holding kids accountable for. Uh, uh, so eh, maybe not all of it is PBL in math. I can't say that clear. I'm just going to say that out loud. I can't say that for certain that we can go 100% PBL on math. The reason I can't say that is because I don't know math that well. I know algorithms. I can teach 7th grade math. But I can't teach math. 7th grade math. I can teach the algorithms. So I, I just say start with one or two and go from there. Uh, until you're going, you know, ready for 100%. I think I think it'll come around. There's a lot of folks. Uh, Bruce Beethe, his last name is B-U-E-T-H-E. -E. He's a math teacher out at Nessity High School. Uh, he also teaches the middle school. He's a great one to connect with. He's just Bruce Beethe um, on Twitter and here on Facebook. There's another fella named Justin Coffey who's in Dodge City who has also high school. But, it, you know, 
if you're talking seventh grade math, pre-algebra, they can help you with this. Coffee, C-O-F-F-E-Y. Google those guys. Justin happened to be the uh, Kansas Teacher of the Year. So that was nice, and he's been doing math PBL for two, three, four years now, maybe. Another fella named Mike Poliquin, P-O-L-I-Q-U-I-N. Just rewind this, P-O-L-I-Q-U-I-N. He teaches upper-level maths, uh, well, and algebra, too, algebra as well, um, over in eastern Kansas. Um, if you haven't taken a look at D.Y. Dan, Dan Meyer's work, he has a three-act math. Google that, three-act math. And he recommends not doing, at least last time I heard from him, uh, he, he says we don't do 100% PBL in math. Uh, he recommends doing great projects about every two weeks, one about every two weeks. And, and so just check out a lot of that stuff. Janine didn't see my response. Would it work to explain to the admin that it could stifle creativity? I've told parents that before. I'm very fortunate to have supportive admin. Yeah, you are. I think you guys are talking to each other. If it is, just clarify for me. I'm rolling through these guys so fast, and I have no concept of what time it is. Okay, there we go. It says it on my computer there. Um, Todd, Todd Flory. I just spoke with his uh, fourth grade district-wide team uh, today about project-based learning. One of the questions he asked um, earlier today was, how do you merge PBL and STEAM into one project? And by STEAM, I'm assuming he means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, I think STEAM STEM, I think that uh, we could, uh, we can do those, STEAM and STEM, uh, with worksheets. And I think I've seen, in fact, I know I've seen it done that way a lot. Uh, here's an activity, kids. We'll throw Barbie over the, over the edge of the banister, uh, and she bounces and goes through, and now we're going to fill out this worksheet that and that's STEM and STEAM. Um, now I'm not saying that's great STEM and STEAM. I'm just saying that's what I've seen the majority of teachers who do it are still doing it very much teacher directed and uh, with worksheet reflections. Um, I think the PBL takes that a step further. I think again instead of the teacher being in charge of everything um, it allows students to start to be in charge of a whole lot more of what they say, how they're studying it, when they're studying it. Um, not completely, not completely, but getting there. If I was to put a continuum together, um, talking maker and PBL, and uh, let's just even break out project, problem, passion, based learning. Let's break that out too, and STEM and STEAM. I think on the far, doesn't matter left or right, uh, you can just bottom even, the one that's more teacher-directed. I'm going to start teacher-directed and go toward more student-centered, complete. Uh, I'm going to start with STEM is more than STEAM. I don't know, maybe they, they're together. And y'all don't have to agree with me on this. It's okay. Um, I'm going to write about it on here. Push back and we'll have a conversation. And then we start moving toward project-based learning. Because with projects, there's usually a definite end and a definite answer. And then problem-based learning, and math teachers will disagree with me on this, and I won't fight you because you've got a different mindset of what a problem is. But for the rest of us, project is more teacher-directed than problem-based learning because it may not actually have an answer or solution that you could really legitimately test. And then passion Passion-based learning goes more towards student-centered because that's what they're choosing, that's what they are. And then I would go to maker education after that. And to me, that's the continuum from more teacher-directed to more student-directed. If you think I, I'm wrong with that, talk in here, write in here. Even if this is like two days later, put something in here, I'll get a notification and, and we can wrestle with it. I think there's many multiple right answers. This is just my perspective. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. They're trying to get your response to whether teachers should make examples for the students to see. Oh, thanks, Jennifer. No. <laughs> I don't think that as a project-based learning classroom and as a teacher, I'm not going to give students examples or exemplars. I won't do it. Uh, because, and I don't care if I'm working with kindergartners or seniors, whatever I show them, they say, oh, and they make that. That really, you're, you're dead on. It stifles creativity. I get what you're saying there. Um, now, could the kids Google something and find a possible uh, an example? Sure. Should they? 
Yes, why not? Um, that's their prerogative. Uh, that's their choice. That's their research. So if I'm asking them to make a digital story, and they're saying, well, I don't know what would that look like. And they Digital story, they're going to come up with, I don't know, 20 different types of digital stories. There's no way I could give them 20 exemplars. And, and there's nothing saying that online what they're looking at is exemplar either. Um, yeah, some art teachers, they want to see that the kids are doing it this way. And, and, and I can't say that I'm an expert in art, so maybe they've got a legitimate reason for that. And I'm not going to fight that if they have a legitimate reason, but I'm really going to push back about, but don't your kids make that same thing? And you know, if you make 30 of the same thing, it's probably not PBL. It's probably them just copying you. Um, the more we give, the less input they have. The more we give, the more it's on our shoulders if things don't work out. I want them to take responsibility. And at first, their stuff is going to stink because they don't know how. But as they start moving forward and trying and experimenting and being disappointed and knowing that they can do better because we're giving them feedback, not just a grade, we're giving them feedback. What about this? What about this? And have you thought here? And, and why did you? And I like how you, you know, those sorts of things that they will get uh, better at choosing um, a higher quality of work. I think that works. Uh, Jennifer, sleep, creep, leap. The first year you sleep, second year you creep, third year you leap. And by the way, it's not always just years. Sometimes it's by the month. Sometimes it's by projects. Yeah. You guys are friends. I'm glad you're in here. Thank you. Um, so Todd also asked another question. Todd Flory from Andover says, how do we ensure, that's Andover, Kansas, by the way. Uh, how do we ensure that we're including a real world connection and having an authentic audience? Ask yourself that question. How does this tie to the real world? Um, how, where will my kids use this? Uh, either the actual solution or the or will they see the actual problem or the, the, the question, the challenge in the real world? And if they won't, because we have to sometimes teach actual school because, hi, we live in the real world with real kids in real classrooms. Um, I... It's better if we can get that hard connection with the real world, but sometimes we just can't. So what real world skills am I asking kids to practice? Are they learning how to write business emails? Are they learning how to make legitimate phone calls to people in the world <laughs> beyond just mom? Are they learning how to, um, uh, what are those skills that they're gonna need in the world? If they can practice these, then I consider that a real world connection. Even if we're doing go back in time and, and, and save the citizens of Pompeii. Yes, that smells a lot like school. Sorry, I'm a teacher in a school. But what real world connections can we make in that? Um, yeah, presentations of community members. That's a great way. If you've got people that really care or know about the topic, um, connect with somebody in, in, the, in the world uh, at a university. If that's a real world, which it could be, it could be. Um, I've had before people reach out and ask about Native American um, people, uh, culture, life, history, current day. Um, I, I'm licensed to teach that stuff, but I'm not an expert in anything Native American. Not really. I know some stuff because I'm a nerd. Uh, and so my kids are talking to university professors and reaching out and, and doing their research like this, Skyping with, emailing with. And that to me is a real world skill, learning how to learn from a source. Never mind this election night, wouldn't it be nice to have that for some of our, our colleagues and families that we have to see their Facebook pages? So the, to me, again, the gurus would disagree. Everything has to have be real world. I think skills are sometimes important to just put in there as well. Um, Kara asked a question is, can I take a field trip to her school? Yeah, I would love to take a field trip to your school. Every single one of you, if I could go there and co-teach with you for a moment, I absolutely would. Uh, and some of us might be able to do that. Um, at the, at the very least, I would love to help launch a project. Even if it's over Skype, I've been doing that with the, oh, I haven't checked in with them for a while up in way Northern Kansas. Um, it's a small town and it's a math class and they wanted to, it's a, 
I don't think the kids will watch this. Uh, it's a junior, sophomore, junior, senior, struggling math kids, and they're building a Viking ship and doing a lot of math, and those kids are so hooked in their math class so deep, I didn't see the final results, darn it. And it's past their deadline. I'm going to have to reach out tomorrow. Um, let's see what else. Scott from Iola, Kansas, says, especially for the littles, he means fourth graders, how do you let them discover since things are so often hard for them to comprehend? Hey, there you are. Um, and learn without getting in the way or the opposite, not getting enough support. How can they learn when they don't always have all the same basic skills? And that's a really, really legitimate question. Uh, fourth graders don't have the reading skills. If they just Google stuff online, the, the, the chances that they're going to have a readability level that they can tackle, not great. Um, and, uh, and so how do we support them without over-supporting them? I think that's good. Also, Scott says research becomes harder the lower. So, yeah. How can we make sure the rest... See, we're right there. I'm with you, man. I got you. I know what you mean. Um, I think that what we want to do with them, uh, I, I like to help collect resources. I want them to learn how to research and find um, but I also know that they can spend a whole lot of time looking for stuff that they just want to read or can read. So I might collect a bunch of resources into a live binder and throw in red herrings, throw in ones that are not high quality or ones that are uh, totally straight false. And, and I'll drop those in there. And I might not even have it organized. I might just have it all under one tab uh, because welcome to the internet. And, and, and they're going to have to read through and sort through. I may make two or three live binders and say, here kids, this is your search, here kids, this is your search, and it's at different reading levels. Um, books, your librarian is your best friend, whether you know it or not. Uh, even if your librarian's just sadly just a para right now, because that happens with a lot of us nowadays. We're cutting librarians like they're a weed or something, and it's heartbreaking because they know stuff. They know stuff that I don't know. Um, uh, tab your librarian and say, could you pull a bunch of resources and let them know ahead of time that you're probably going to need something like that and say, kids, maybe we should go to the library and see what's available. And that teacher would be like, oh, I just happened to, you know, whatever. Um, and so the kids can research through that sort of stuff too. Uh, is that helpful for you, Scott? Oh, yeah, Janine, help out there. Uh, yeah, we got, by the way, y'all, if you don't know Janine uh, Addis, she has been doing project-based learning for six years, Janine? Is that what you're at now with PBL? Um, been working with her, uh, and she's just out on her own doing some amazing things now. And well, not on your own. She's in a great school that gives support. And so she has a lot of advice that folks can can, uh, should leverage if you can. Scott, I would love to hear from you if I kind of touch the topic like you need to. Um, I don't want to go too much longer. If you do have another question, y'all, that you want to drop in here, uh, make sure you do. And if you if you come in, like I said, even two, three days later and you drop a question in, I'm still here. I'll jump right in there. Your fifth year, Janine. Okay, yeah. Fifth year. Whew. <laughs> Janine was in a school that she helped start, actually, that was 100% PBL. Very similar to, to my, my situation. So, so, Scott had another question. Uh, can every topic lend itself to PBL? I say yes. Yes. With a caveat. <laughs> you thought I was just going to have like a straight answer. Um, there are times people will come and ask me, well, Ginger, how do I make a grammar unit? I mean, how can I make that? I don't. There are certain foundational skills that I will not make a PBL unit for just that. Um, I will roll that into another unit and say, hey, guys, you know, we're, we're going to be addressing the, the city council. Or we're going to be sending this very formal, so we need to make sure it's written properly and with proper mechanics and grammar. Do we know how to do that? Can we practice that a little bit? And then it gives me an opportunity to get them to practice those things. Hey guys, I've noticed that a lot of us are using the wrong there. We need to figure that out. Have a little side workshop and go forward. Um, every topic. I can't think of a topic that wouldn't lend itself to PBO. It's learning by doing. It's real. It's authentic. If it's, there were some things I did teach though that I had to teach. What were those things that I said? I, I, I straight called it crap curriculum because I worked with fifth through eighth graders a lot of the time, and I could use the term crap because 
we could. Uh, parents understood what was going on. And I would say things uh, like, guys, I don't, this is something you have to learn for the test. I don't know when you're ever going to use this in the real world. Maybe you will. Maybe I'm just dumb like that. Um, but um, this is crap curriculum. we got to learn it for the test. Are you guys okay with that? And most of the time, they're like, yes, we understand. Thanks for being honest. We're going to do an old school way of learning this. Uh, a lot of times, I would just straight talk to them about some things. They'd take notes. We'd study back and forth. Then we'd take a test and say, we got it for the test. Okay. And move back into something way more interesting and fun. And the kids were more tolerant of that. I think when they have to do that all the time, in fact, I think sometimes it was a neat break for them. They were like, oh, yeah, this is what school used to be like all the time. It's kind of fun now. Uh, I had students before who would go to our textbooks if they were researching things. The kids kind of sometimes want to go back to old school from time to time because there's value in it, just not all the time. So uh, some kids would pull out textbooks instead of going online to research stuff. They're like, oh my God, this textbook is so awesome to read all the answers, like all the vocabularies in bold. I can like look up stuff in the back of the book just by the word and it tells me what page it's on. The kids were looking like some sort of magic something they were looking at. Like, oh my God, this has all the answers in it. Meanwhile, two years ago, the kids would never have cracked a textbook, even if I'd have punched them in the head to make them do it, right? And now they're wanting to. And they're starting to see the value of reference books. I call that a win. I'm, my husband and I, total nerds, we have shelves full of reference books, even though we have Google now. And I'm not sure we use those books anymore. But if I couldn't find something I liked online, I know that if I go to my PDR, my physician's desk reference, WebMD might tell me I'm going to have cancer. My physician's desk reference is going to shoot me straight because that is written for doctors. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um... I want kids to have PBL as much as they possibly can. I can't think, back to the same question that Scott was asking, I can't think of a thing that wouldn't relate to PBL. Challenge me with that. Say, what about this? How would you make this PBL? Uh, throw this in later on down the road if you want. Folks, I think we've come to the end of our questions. Have I, uh, have I hit everybody's topics? Uh, if you guys haven't friended everybody in this chat, um, I just want you to know Jennifer Miller. Uh, Jennifer, you teach fifth grade, right? She's a teacher out at um, Dodge City. Again, Jennifer, you and, and Justin Coffey were getting PBL work with me at the same time. So that's about three, four years ago. You've been been doing that for a while. Erica's in Oklahoma. You can see what she teaches in math. Andrea. <gasps> Andrea. I don't know you. Oh, I know another Andrea Schaefer, and I'm pretty sure this is not the one I know. Oh, no. But I know we talk. I'm so sorry. I'll get you. Let's talk more, and I'll, and I'll have you planted in my head. Um, we've met in real life. I know we have. And uh, so I think, folks, this is where you are. <laughs> Janine, yes, this is not election crap. This is very important stuff, the election. <laughs> you have been wallowing in it. Like the whole time, Janine. I can't even believe you have. Uh, my husband was watching some old recorded comedy shows a little bit ago. We'll check in before we go to bed. And there's pretty much nothing we can do about it now, right? That's not true. This is still America. We can still work and, and move things forward however, however we want to go. And, and every day, we can be good to people and call others out gently if they're not being good to people. Anyway. This is the election respite, and this was an Ask Ginger Anything. I need to quickly, if I can, hold tight here for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and give you the schedule for the next one. Actually, Thursday I'm going out of the country, so hopefully, regardless of the election, I'm out of here, y'all. Um, I need to I'm gonna come in here and see what our next, this internet is so daggum slow, um, what our next scheduled uh, chat is about and I don't know what day it is and it's not coming up and well it, that's how that works when you say it's not it changes and then says ah, no nope, we're really not um thanks everybody uh, appreciate it again if you like these little snippets and are impatient for better uh, higher quality information the lessons for life practice learning you can get that on our esdac shop you can also go to lifepracticepbl.org and look for the book if you can, you can buy it on Kindle, it's $10 on Amazon. Or if you buy it from the paperback on Amazon, it's $40.
they made me charge more. If you get it from the ESDAC or the lifepracticepbl.org, it's $30 for that book. And um, I, I, I'd love some reviews if anybody wanted to do that on our uh, Amazon page. That would be super duper. Super duper. That's a fun word. Okay, well, it loaded-ish. It's not scrolling. There we go. I've got the schedule now. So it looks like December 7th is our next, our penultimate, which is the, the uh, one before the end, uh, next to the last, uh, live chat. It's PBL Leadership, Leading the Way. So this is for administrators, uh, December 7th. Have them mark their calendars. And by the way, it's more than just for that. It's for curriculum people. It's for you all, because you're leading the way. Uh, as, as my boss, who, by the way, hates being called a boss, uh, as my Tamara says, leadership is a... Uh, it's, a, it's an action word. It's not a title. It's an action. And you all are here at 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night, and, and you're leaders in the field, and I really appreciate this, guys. And, and if you come in in tomorrow, you're just a learner and, and a leader. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Always happy to see you. Have a good night, and uh, let's all say our, uh, <laughs> say our prayers tonight. <laughs>